It's Thursday, and you know what that means. Welcome to episode 324 of Max Wrestling. This is your captain speaking. Coming up this week, we are predicting double or nothing and looking to take some gold from bold predictions. He would be here to defend it himself, but unfortunately, Monday Night Raw has scared off Chad. Has it scared I, off everybody? I, yeah, I can't say I blame him. <laughs> Uh, first of all, allow me to welcome my co-horsemen. They are, of course, the podcast machine, Mike Larkin, El Jefe, Moses Marquez, and Travis DeWalker Anderson. Anderson. Oh, Top of the morning. For, we got a full house, but we are also, we do have a guest, even though Chad is, uh, recovering from being experienced raw. That's why I don't watch it. I, yeah, I, I try to tell people not to watch it, because this is what happens. Chad's rocking in a corner right now, flicking the light on and off. We well, are. Let me tell you. Let, let me tell you. I was trying to watch Raw yesterday, right? Try it. And I was, I was so damn bored with it. I just completely zoned out, wasn't paying attention. I started doing stuff around the house. And then next thing I know, I'm like, I go back. I'm like, all right, maybe I should peep in and see what's happening. And Keith Lee was on. I was yeah. like, what? What the hell? Turns out I ended up tuning out the entire show and a previous episode came on. <laughs> Atta boy. <laughs> so I, I didn't watch any of it. Oh, you yeah. mean you don't want to see the riveting television of Bobby Lashley and his hoes from different area codes? Nope. The Bob exactly. Father part two. The yeah, Bob Father Bob part two. <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't better than the first TikTok one. Now. I'm, I'm seeing dudes uh, using fucking uh, the goddamn Ho Train song. Uh, Well, there may be another reason for Chad being afraid because we're also joined by someone who strikes more fear into him than the Zack Snyder length from Monday Night Raw. (laughs) But don't be too afraid. It's the human side of the former promo champion, the Demon S. Hello, everybody. Hello, Nicola. Hello. Good afternoon. Now, a lot's happened Not since here, we, man. since you've been on Promomania. You've been popping up somewhere else. Uh, yeah, we, um, we've we been kind of busy. Um, she heard something and she kind of, well, we all know what the demoness does best. So she uh, decided to um, take on or have a go at three certain people, but we'll get to that later on. Yes. <laughs> See, I'm not sure if we're building bridges or just burning them right away. Because we've had our own issues with uh, Bold and Ryan Squared. But we'll, uh, we'll get into that. Now, um, <laughs> obviously we've been taking digs at Monday Night Raw, which means we are not reviewing Monday Night Raw this week. So, Jesus. if you're watching on YouTube, now is the time to hit the subscribe button, like and share us on Facebook, and subscribe to our audio streams on all podcast platforms. So, no Raw this week. We're not doing it. If you want to know what happened, we probably talked about the same shit last week. Oh, Adnan Verk. So, yeah, so there's a couple of things that didn't happen on Raw that we can talk about. Um, Adnan Verk released after, well, not mutually parted ways. After, what's it been, two months? Not even that. A month and a half, pretty a much. A month like and a half. Shows on a month and a half. Six wow. episodes. Six or seven episodes, yep. Yeah, he was god-awful. He was. I mean, he's not going to – I mean, here's the thing about that, dude. He talks about, you know, travel and his prior other commitments. He's on the MLB Network. I think he's on, like, two podcasts. So he's going to have stuff to do, and he can just go back to talking about baseball. Okay, well, dude, here's – that's the thing. You can't have a baseball guy talking wrestling. What the fuck? Well, now we got an MMA guy going to talk wrestling. That should work. <laughs> Why is it so difficult? To hire a wrestling commentator. Why do they always have to be a Fox analyst no or a ones. sportscaster? Yeah, there's no that good ones. And name recognition. Like I know, I know. For the longest time, they kept teasing the idea of bringing in Daniel Cormier as a as a commentator. I'm like, well, then do that. Like that guy's a fucking wrestling fan, at least. So I'll add on to that because Moses said so eloquently. So Jimmy Smith is the one who's going to play Sad and Burke, former UFC and American Ninja Warrior announcer. It reminds me back in 05, you know, when Joey Styles came in and replaced JR around the late yeah. 2005, early 06. I believe the original person they were going to have replace him was Mike Goldberg from the UFC because he had tried that at that time. Hmm. 
So, I mean, that would have been interesting, having a UFC commentator and announcer be on WWE television at that time. True. I'm just glad it's not Eva Marie. That that was my yeah. idea. Just <laughs> How terrible would it be? Everybody's expecting Eva Marie to come back to the ring with all these promos. What if she actually turned out to be a new commentator? Mm-mm. <laughs> That would or be she's evolution. Gonna be, or she's going to be like the uh, Sonya Deville of Raw. That, that would be even worse. <laughs> Ugh, well, that preview, man, where she's just talking about role models and bettering herself and all this stuff again, I'm going to say it right now. It's like the Jade Cargill thing for me with AEW. Like, again, beautiful woman, great body. I don't want to see her wrestle. No. And I, mm-hmm. Well, I laughed because that, that I told you guys about that playlist, Eva Marie's Greatest Moments. What great moments? How what long was talking? that video? Like eight minutes. How in the hell did they get eight minutes out of that? Was it just all of her entrances? <laughs> they showed that, and I think just they showed like a thing. Yeah. Oh, they, they did show, I believe, where she slapped Jerry Lawler when they were introducing the Total Divas cast. Sorry, slapped Jerry Lawler. I slept with Jerry Lawler. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> because more. I wouldn't be surprised at Eva won. No. Oh, that woman. I swear to God, just that woman. No. That you, man. You, get, again, you get rid of Mickey James, you get rid of Peyton Royce and Chelsea Green for this mm-hmm. one. Like I know I know they brought it back before they fired them all, but obviously they were planning on firing them. Yeah. Anyway. Have um, I mentioned this company sucks? Have yeah, we have we mentioned sucks. this company sucks? Uh well, for me when it comes to that, besides NXT, I think for me I can take SmackDown overall any day. SmackDown has been a lot better than Raw, with Roman Smack. Reigns and everybody involved. Yeah. yeah, no, I think Pat McAfee. Yeah. <laughs> that too, that too. And also the fact that he was rocking out to Boogs. On Absolutely. Yeah, Boogs is the man. You know what my problem was that everybody was saying about Pat McAfee? Because I did see people complain when Samoa Joe got released. It's like, you fire Samoa Joe, but you keep but you keep Pat McAfee. I'm like, shut up. Pat you McAfee's know? actually a wrestling fan. Like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, he's a wrestling fan, and it's not like he they fired Joe or they they fired Joe to bring him in and and play Joe in the ring. Right. And Joe wanted to wrestle. Okay, trust me, I would love him on commentary too. But the guy wants to wrestle, so I, why would I, I? I'm he's probably happy he's out. So who fucking cares? So chill the hell out. Pat's doing great. At least I think so. Minus no. the whole I'm gonna like imitate Vince McMahon thing just for him not to go for it because nobody in, imitates me. You fucker. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then he shaved for nothing. Nah, he's the best thing right now with commentary and announcing. Pat McAfee is like fucking killing it on all cylinders. You're right. Does, does he make Michael Cole more bearable? Yes. Yeah. I can actually That's a hell of a talent. <laughs> he, he, what is it? What is it? Um, how did I put it to my wife? He's so over the top, it kind of drowns Michael Cole out. Yeah. Which is, which reminds me of like the early 2000s when he still, when, when he was even worse. Mm-hmm. And we just get drowned out by who was another? Who was the guy who drowned him out? Oh, we're... Taz. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Taz. He, he oh, Taz or Taz. Jerry Lawler. Oh, I miss Taz. Oh wait, he's on AEW, so I don't miss Taz. Yeah, I did miss Taz, and then he started speaking so much on AEW. Now every time he picks up a mic, I'm like, ah, brother. No, I love it. To, you don't want to hear brother? Red Hook section of Brooklyn, New York, brother. No, because you know who he reminds me of. Anyway. <laughs> I'm telling him to shut up every time I hear his voice. I'm like, oh, shut the fuck up. Seriously. <laughs> we was uh, no neck, long beard, bald head, and baseball cap. Uh-huh. That's that fucking <laughs> neck life, boy. That's fucking, that's that getting suplexed forever. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that stack of dimes you call a neck. Mm-hmm. Uh, other news, Mike, which yes. you brought to my attention. Uh, one be a Priestley possibly on her way to NXT. She will be great. I mean, what they're doing right now with Kaylee Ray and Mako Satomura on the NXT UK brand in the women's division, I cannot wait for their rematch. You had someone like Bea Priestley along there with Isla Dawn and, you know, Piper Niven and uh, so many great talents there. I mean, it's one of those things where if you're not checking out again, and I say this to you, Dazzy Dangerously, bitch, and maybe you, Nikola, which I'm going to say right now, you got to watch it, girl, because I got your back as well. The NXT UK women's division, the NXT UK product, one of the fastest growing stars and one of the fastest growing brands on NXT. So many amazing talents. Women's division, tag division, heavyweight division, headed by Walter. You got to see it. You got to check it out. It's very underrated and also, I will say, sometimes, in a way, it is better than the normal NXT that we get each and every Tuesday. So, bada bing, bada boom, NXT UK on Thursdays, baby. Can we, can we move NXT UK to Mondays? 
I would love yeah. it if they would be on Mondays. <laughs> They're I'd good. Love to if it's on Monday. You know what it is about that too, and some people complain, oh, there's just a lot of wrestling on that. That's a good thing. We want a lot of good wrestling on there. There's the story that tells it, yes, but if you want to see some high octane aerial assault and some great wrestling, some chain wrestling, dare I say some catch as catch can, you gotta go with NXT UK. Is it Shawn Michaels in charge of NXT UK? Hell to the air. Yeah. Well there you go. <laughs> Like they're gonna need to start watching. Yeah. You, you gotta. I'm gonna say for Kaylee. I gotta Ray, at least give it a shot. Yeah. yeah Kaylee oh yeah, Ray yeah. Ray. Just for Kaylee Ray. <laughs> Kaylee, Kaylee Ray. Oh. Hey. Well, no, wait, 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 wait. I, I was. Uh, I wasn't exactly zoning out, but I was doing some research in the background. So, B Priestley is a free agent, and she may be heading over that way. Yeah, she'll do great okay. in that division. Because that totally is like a part of a bunch of random rumors that I've been hearing about Will wanting out of new japan to follow her to the u.s or to the at least back home to the uk other than that i know his injury is pretty bad like i know he posted that he, he's got to get an mri on his low back now too and his neck is fucked but apparently he was cleared enough to wrestle according to new japan officials so and then now the giant rumor is now that against i guess she's going you know nxt aka wwe looks like he wants out too so i don't know I don't know how much truth there is to that. I mean, I, I know he, like, loves Japan, so I don't think he's going to go run into WWE, but who knows? Well, 35 office employees left WWE this week. Yeah. Oofa. Uh, one of them being Alex McCarthy, uh, who is, or was, um, the International Vice President of Communications. Basically, WWE's PR guy for the UK. Gone. Gone, eh? And the worst thing about it is everybody that's left now has to report directly to Kevin Dunn. Fuck oh, that. Gross. Beaver teeth, <laughs> motherfucker. I'd rather be fired. All right. <laughs> I remember that one time on TV, I think, uh, was it William Regal or one of them was in the production truck? I think it might have been Eric Bischoff just yelling and yes, berating him. Yes, it was that Eric made... Bischoff. Eric Bischoff, thank you made me laugh so hard it did just because i you know what it is too because ever since the documentary came out when he's the one who told jr he's dead and we're back in three two one oh that that put the nail in my coffin for him yeah Damn. that that's absolutely kevin dunn yeah kevin dunn um i mean you, you can see why they have to keep firing so many people when they're making millions all the time well, you can also see him, like, that's very visible. If you go back and watch Tough Enough 2, he's on there with a lot of the judges and friggin', um, just everybody from JR, just to everybody on that show. But it's one of those things where Kevin Dunn is a part of it because he's, he's big into that reality show stuff. He's the guy with the diva search and shit like that. So that's why he was mostly involved with all that crap. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he was shown quite a lot on Tough Enough, unfortunately. Yes, he Unfortunately, so but well, hey, that gave... I never watched it tough enough. Well, hey, it gave us John Morrison, it gave us Matt Capitelli, it gave us The Miz, it gave us friggin' Maven for God's sake, and Nidia, Nidia. So that's giggity giggity. So, I mean, it's one of those things, man. <laughs> okay, for the good side of WWE, uh, NXT US kicked off with Shotzi. And now, I didn't, I don't know how I felt about the, the opening match because both of them kind of needed the win, but both teams also. Couldn't afford to lose. It was like Shotty and Ember just lost the women's tag team titles. We got Dakota, who still keeps getting shafted, and she's obviously the one who took the pin. Hate her. Yeah, why? I don't know. She's boring. Oh, you hate her. I thought you said they hate her. No, it's, no, I said they, not me. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. Nope. I don't. I don't mind Dakota. I she's like she is like a very 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 bad version of Shawn Michaels right now, <laughs> and it's fine. And because it's it's like she's she knows what she's doing. She knows her role is you know meant to be that the fucking the whiny little nerd next to the fucking you know big dominant champion. Which by the way, I'm not a giant fan of the belt around the back as you show off your big back. But whatever, it's, that's your gimmick. Yeah, I didn't get what she was doing with that. I actually sat there going, okay, is this a thing? Well, okay. all right. To no, okay. showing off her back. At least I got I, a comment on that. See your back. At no, least when Ziggler did it, it made sense. He was wiggling his ass. Wait a minute. Hold on. Right? 
it's not like back in the day when Johnny Nitro and Joey Mercury would, would put the tag Yay. title crotch. Ooh, okay. I did not need that image in my head. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean, Paige did worse things with the belts, but we won't get into that oh, one. Don't even go now. I've heard about that. As, oh, that's even worse. Look, I have nightmares already. Don't give me worse ones or normal ones. <laughs> Wait, but the demon has gets nightmares. Uh, no, she gives me nightmares. <laughs> she's channeling her Avenged Sevenfold, is what she's doing. It comes to life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Uh-huh. Nightmare. Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, this rivalry doesn't seem to be done though because of course, as we said, Shotzi and Ember got the win. Uh, Raquel then beat the crap out of them after the match, uh, which Travis, I'm sure, didn't enjoy seeing Shotzi bounce off the friggin' barricade. Ouch! Hell no! no like, <laughs> I was so. mad as hell. Like I, I was watching that part and like my daughter it came running into the room was like, "What's wrong, Daddy? What's wrong? What happened? What happened?" I'm like, they're beating up my girl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at, least, at least you said it the right way. <laughs> um, following this, a little bit of a banger. Pete Dunn versus Bobby Fish. Uh, Bobby Fish's first match back in I don't know how long. But it was Pete Dunn who got the win. Because they seem to be pushing Pete Dunn right now. Peter Dunn. Peter Dunn. Peter Dunn. Good stuff as always. Oh yeah. I mean, I, hopefully Boy. they're pushing him towards carrying cross because then, okay, we've had enough cross and Balor now. Yeah, right. You know that's not gonna fucking stop no time <laughs> soon. And I don't know what's what the, the hell's going on with Kyle O'Reilly. Well, what's the number one contender? <laughs> Was it Pete Dunn, Kyle O'Reilly? Who was the other one? Pete Dunn, Kyle O'Reilly, Johnny Gargano. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I mean, because I don't think it's gonna be Johnny. I think no. they like. I really like him in the the comedy role where he's just a fucking doofus. So there's that. I don't. I feel like they're gonna throw Pete right into it. I feel like yeah. he's got the most momentum, and and I don't know. Maybe they they think fucking cool Kyle's not as cool as, you know, they thought he was. So I don't fucking know. Yeah, the whole double denim thing kind of backfired. Yeah, the Canadian tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> we we don't need cool Kyle. Just be Kyle who you were before. We love that Kyle O'Reilly. Just be a badass. Yeah, right. Hey, did um, did fucking cro- cross hurt his shoulder, right? Not his bicep. Cross always hurts his shoulder. <laughs> okay, I just wanted him. I was like, because I'm like wondering why this fucking dweeb's wearing a goddamn elbow pad. Does he not? No, he doesn't normally wear one. No. Uh-huh. It always freaks me out when they wear pads when they don't normally. Like when Randy Orton uh, stopped wearing knee pads. <laughs> like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> And then there was a time when he... guys are injured. Yeah. Then there was a time he suddenly started wearing elbow pads. You're like, what are you doing? <laughs> that's not your attire. That's, that's not you, bro. <laughs> um, now, for the Hit Row promo, or the Skid Row I promo... I loved it. It was good. good. There was, there was, it was better than the last two, but there was one oh, line yeah. that really grinded my gears. Uh-oh. Um, what's what's yeah. the big one's name? AJ from uh, the most haunt, AJ most haunted Frank. Yeah, he's got like, two different names. Um, his line was, "What's Godzilla to King Kong?" Well, I hate to break it to you, but spoiler alert: Godzilla whooped his ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's more referring to the to like the rap lingo. Unless he's referring to the original King Kong versus Godzilla, because Kong won that one. Yeah. And then you know swam away, even though apes are afraid of water. You know, I got to so. say about this promo, very ghetto, fabulous vibes. And I also would like to say, when it comes to the tag titles, whether it be him or whether it be the artist formerly known as Tahuti Miles, I look at it from a stance too. They're ready to throw some D's on that bitch. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> What's that dude's name? He used to formerly be Tahuti Miles. Now what the no, hell? No, it's, so- it's something Top Dollar. That's what his name is. Top Dollar. Top oh, Dollar. How the hell did you not come up with that shit sooner? That's, that's cool. I got to say. Uh, I like this group. It's growing on me. It's growing on me. I like this group. Uh, Swerve is like he's getting on my nerves because he's kind of like this, like the same old guy. But at least he's not like the fucking rainbow haired weirdo that he was two and a half months ago. Mm-hmm. He's gotten finally got away from goddamn uh, Leon Ruff. 
I I and, just find the random rhyming cringy. Like when somebody says something and somebody else says something that rhymes. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, at least it works way better than Max Caster. Oh, I hate that guy. I hate him exactly. But I also look at it from a stance too. Like you and I, I mean, we've seen Shane Strickland from his days as Killshot and Lucha Underground, so we're both pulling from him for him there, Moses. Oh yeah, well I've seen that. I saw his whole indie run, you know, MLW World yep. Champ, the whole everything. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm a huge Shane Strickland fan. Like I want the world for this guy because the fact is, I feel he's beyond talented. It's just like that's the problem when you get to WWE. They don't know what to do with. You. We're gonna have to remake you into. Uh, fuck, we didn't think this through. Yeah, we know. <laughs> now you know. Oh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> God damn. You, know what, you know what's interesting, too? When I look at his initials, ISS, I like Isaiah Sore Scott. I've always liked it with the initials ISS. And no, I'm not talking about in-school suspension. So, I mean, that's another I was, about to, I was just about to say the same thing. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you bring back my childhood when I would get suspended. Yep, yep. They, we kept it simple. We just called it isolation. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's not terrible. <laughs> hey, man. We're not going to scar a child oh. forever. <laughs> Bro, we had the timeout room at East Islip High School. I felt like I was back in kindergarten. We actually had a thing called the timeout room. It was redonk. It was I, wasn't ridiculous. It was redonkulous. Go ahead. I like the name Isolation because every time I hear that word, I think of the Alter Bridge song, and it's awesome. All right. What? Yes. Okay, I dig it. <laughs> I had that too. Isolation. Mm, the, ugh, no. No. Scar kids. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> And before you ask, yes, I did spend at least maybe three or four times in isolation. But that was a long time ago, you know, being ancient and everything. Yeah, I, I think we'll all take that over to Kane. Yeah. Yeah, any day of the week. Although maybe I'm some in this, maybe some in this generation could do with a cane. Yeah, definitely. But anyway, agreed. It was a bad week on NXT for Travis this week because Caden Carter also got her ass whooped by Mercedes Martinez. Okay. Yeah. Wait, was that no. her? <laughs> yeah. Was I'm... that Caden Carter for real? Yeah. That was Caden, and interestingly enough. It did not um, look like her. I swear to God, something about her was like, that's not Caden Carter. K- Casey Catanzaro is no longer listed on the NXT roster. Oh, yeah, I don't know boy. what's going on there. Yeah, because, like, even uh, uh, Caden's, like, freaking posting all kinds of stuff by herself like she's not playing any posting nothing with her or anything so i don't know what's going on there <laughs> i mean as far uh, as i know she's still she's done again NXT. but didn't she already like retire once yeah it it could be a similar situation to uh kylie ray hmm? i have her retire to leave and go over here and make travis mad <laughs> um, it won't make Casey, Travis mad. He'll be happy if she goes to AEW, Kat, right? Like, Kat and they would use... Can, like, stay gone. I don't care. Like, oh, okay. I'm not God. <laughs> the fucking thoughts that just went through my head with that one statement. Oh, they heard of AEW. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's talk oh. about the... Like, bro, like, you think uh, Britt Baker was is a fucking star? Let fucking TK and, the, and fucking uh, Kenny Omega get a hold of this little girl. Oh, my God. That would be interesting. And she's adorable. Time, like, yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on. That wasn't Caden Carter. That was Zayda Ramir. See, thank you. Was it? Yeah. Show us how much money I paid. Not they no Caden Carter, bro. They have that. That's, like, that's why was, I said was, no comment. Was like, because Caden short. <laughs> See, <laughs> <All> <laughs> I slept halfway through. Two things. That, <laughs> that's how similar they look, and that's how short the match was. Mm-hmm. Facts and facts. Yeah, Zayda Ramir. I think. That, wait, that's the girl that that job to freaking you know Soraya called me, though. Yeah, I remember her then, and I remember then thinking, oh, she, uh, is that Kate? No, that's not Caden Carter. Stop looking like each other. I was going to have some twin magic going on up in here. Mm-hmm. Up in here? Oh, up in here. Oh, yeah, didn't you get taller all of a sudden? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I pretty much like fell asleep after Bronson Reed's uh, little speech. I maybe missed a little bit before. Uh, but, I mean, I missed a lot. <laughs> the the match wasn't the biggest story here anyway. It was what happened after the match, as uh, Mercedes seems to be the new target of Boa and Zaya Lee. Oh, I'm yeah, cool with that. I'm cool with that. 
I want to see Boa it. wrestle. Yeah, he, seriously. Like, he, I can do something, pal. He's just he become Zia Lee's chauffeur. Wait, hold on. Okay. And apparently, you know he just likes to stalk people in the hallway. Yeah. You know what he is? He is the equivalent of Lord Tensai and Sakamoto. He's Sakamoto. <laughs> I never thought of it like that. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> he is like, okay, I'll make it like this. We had Tajiri, right? He is there, Akio and Sakota. Oh, he's the two dudes holding the rope as you're about to choppy choppy the pee pee. Oh. Yup, yup. Ugh. Ugh. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> we already mentioned the uh, the million dollar face off. Oh. Um which which started out pretty this. cool. And Cameron Grimes really made me feel sorry for him. Like, why are you doing it to me, man? <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't always look? rich. <laughs> that was my favorite part. I wasn't always rich, and, and then I thought I could, you know, humiliate people with money, and they'd still lock me. And I'm like, wait, what? Is that what all rich people think? And he, he referenced a basketball, too. I thought oh, it was yeah, okay was to kick boring. a basketball as a kid's dribbling. And then, of course, fucking you know, out comes this dweeb who had to fucking ruin the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, goddamn LA um, night, you fucker. So my, my line of thinking is Cameron Grimes turning face and possibly there's talk about bringing back the Million Dollar Championship. I think it'd look good on LA night. Yeah. I think it'll be a, uh, no, I think Cameron would win it. I think it's going to be a match between the two of them, LA night and Cameron Grimes uh, in your house and See, the Million Dollar Belt will be when, on the line. When I looked at LA Knight and Ted DiBiase side by side, all I saw was Ted DiBiase and the ringmaster. Yep, yep, same vibes. I, I was really hoping that Ted DiBiase Jr. was going to have, like, a comeback. Yeah. I was kind of, kind of hoping. High no, he's too busy player being a high school football coach. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I'm going to say right now, I missed the DiBiase parties. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The posse. There you go, the posse. That's what I just said, the DBSC posse. I thought you said party. I, I heard said party. Posse. <laughs> All right, well, I said party. I was like, wait, there was a party? Who's party? Who's doing a party? <laughs> All right, well, whatever. I probably did say party. I'll go to a millionaire's my... party. <laughs> as long as I ain't serving White Claw. Right. Uh, <laughs> white Claw and Whoppers for the, for the masses. Oh. I'll take the Whoppers, but you can keep the White Claw. Why they're not too bad. What about five guys, man? Ah, oh, drooling on the microphone right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Now, somebody else who is drooling is Indy Hartwell. Oh. Oh, this. Poor she girl. Broke his heart. Uh, about four, four months ago, I hated this fucking dweeb, and he was the fucking creep from the creep farm that all of a sudden became <laughs> athletic, and this and that, and I hated his gimmick, and then he slowly grew on me, and now I feel bad for him. All right. <laughs> it it was a nice little segment. <laughs> you poor bastard. Of, well, of, first and foremost, of all my the problem people. with you, and I say this, Moses, is because when you talk about how he was a dweeb, watch his impact run. All right? Watch the impact run. And yeah, but he was a creepy like, dweeb then, too. He was, but it, this is much better than friggin' <laughs> falling in love with Christy Hemi because his mom's name was Christy. Yeah, that's That was weird. weird. That's way fucking weird. What was his nickname? Creepy Bastard, weren't it? Or something like that? Yes, yes. I was trying that all the time. Why did you say that name? Christ, yeah. Impact, don't pull no punches while you're at it. No. I, I, I love those chants. Creepy Bastard. bastard. I used to love charging that. Well, now I'm the Creepy Bastard. That makes sense. <laughs> the funny part about that is if you remember, like, during that whole entire storyline, Christy Hemi actually sang his theme song. Because, again, that's not weird. Exactly. No. I not know. the fact that he had a doll with him that he looked that looked like, you oh, no, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I'm now, I'm now the creepy one, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and of all the people to lead Indy to the right room, little Drake Maverick. Oh, yeah. What a You're kind soul. <clears throat> yeah. Kind soul. Sh shut up, Everise, fucking fat Matt and Nut Nick. There you go. <laughs> you looking for Dexter's in that dark room over there? 
We're gonna make fun of that Canadian accent. He's not Canadian. Oh. He's a Brumai. Oh, not you. I was talking. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about Fat Max. I I was going towards Fat Matt. I'm sorry. Oh, he's all. He's all. What you? What do you want to do? You want to take a swing at me? And I'm like, Why in the fuck are you yelling at a girl to take a swing at you? Like, that's what like, the just fuck is. To Raquel in Dakota, though. He did the same I know. Thing. That's what. I, that's what my fucking problem with this dweeb is. I'm like, you just you just want to pick a fight with a girl, I'm like. And then the one big girl girl punched, like, punked you, dude. Like, did you not learn your lesson? Dads, can you please do Drake Maverick's yeah. action? You're looking for dick that he's in that dark room over there? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That's nailed it, that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pouring. He found, found all these draw- heartbroken drawings from Dexter scattered all over the room. All over the place. <laughs> the creepy fuck has a heart. Like all the matches on NXT are great, but as far as storylines go, this is the one I'm most interested in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like the one thing that Road Dog can actually write. Ah, uh, something like tells me breakups. it's not Road Dog writing this one because it's actually good. Oh God, I hope not. So yeah, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm hoping I'm wrong. Maybe somebody else is like, you know what? Let me just handle this on my own. Maybe Sean. Hmm? Oh please. <laughs> that or what happened to Hunter? Hunter don't write nothing no more. He's the fucking old man now. He don't do shit. It it would make sense for Sean to write it. I mean, he is the heartbreak kid. There you go. Yeah. He had many love triangles. Yes, he did. <laughs> and rectangles and pentangles. <laughs> the whole man. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, Travis had a bad start with Shotzi. Then I had a bad start because I've been talking about um, Cora Jade coming to NXT since last year, and unfortunately, she was the one I had to job to Frankie Monet in her debut match. Cora Elena Black, man, our girl. That's it. Yeah, Elena Black, Cora Jade. Mm-hmm. Her first match, I Frankie know. Monet's first match, and of course, it's a squash for Frankie. But uh, yeah. I mean, on the plus side, Frankie looked great. Yeah. Road to Valhalla, brother. Road to Valhalla. <laughs> was it? Yeah, it was all right. Eh. It, it was what you'd expect from her. At least, uh, you know, she wasn't was just, ruined or anything. I was just going to say, I was like, I've seen the deliver matches, and I'm like, they're all basically the same shit. It, it was also one of those rare occasions where somebody debuts in NXT, and I don't hate their music. Yeah. I'll give you that. Like, it, it fits her perfectly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, Bronson Reed, as we said, had a little face-to-face. Well, he cut a little speech, and it seems now he's going to be feuding with Santos Escobar for the North American title, which uh, doesn't include Canada, apparently. That part killed me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like, what about Canada? Like, we what? talked about this. It doesn't include Canada. <laughs> and I'm just like, but it's got Canada on it, you dickhead! <laughs> like, look at the belt. <laughs> <laughs> but then he's like, but it's got Mexico on it. So it means, I'm like, it, whatever, you're a fucking moron. <laughs> but I hope you guys have a good match. You're, was, you're still an idiot. It was funny because I had a similar discussion earlier yesterday with Amir over how the UK is made up of different countries. And we're not all part of England. Yep. <laughs> Best way to confuse everybody. But yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it's four Tell countries, me. but it's all a country together? Yeah. Yeah, it's part, parts, maybe? But yeah. <laughs> so enlighten me, how many countries are in the UK? Four. <laughs> so England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, and then the UK itself is a country. Yep. What the fuck? Yep. See, I used to think of it much simpler as it's four countries and one nation, but apparently UK is a country yeah. too. Oh, well, you just taught me something because <laughs> I thought the same as you for a very long time. <laughs> okay. See, that makes more sense when you simplified it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, but, but it's to us, it's a country. Okay. The way the way I explained it, explained it to Amir was, imagine the UK as the USA, but instead of states, we've got countries inside of it. I dig it. Yeah. I understand it, but goddamn you, educational system for fucking my life up. This is like the metric system all over again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and finally, main events. Karrion Cross retains the NXT title against Finn Balor. I mean, 
it was a banger of a match, but I'm kind of done with the rematches now. I want to see something fresh. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. Uh, I didn't I don't want to go as far as saying a banger. I mean, I enjoyed it. It was it was very brutal. I'll give it that. They beat the fuck out of each other, which is I would expect nothing less from these two guys. But that's my now. That's now the next question: Who's going to beat the shit out of Carrying Cross in the next match, <laughs> or vice versa? So my immediate guess is going to be Pete Dunn. Yeah. Even though I wouldn't hate Cool Kyle, but I think Pete Dunn's the guy. There's there's one other guy for the job. Or can yeah. take on Carrying <laughs> Cross, Drake Maverick. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, I mean, at the same run. time. Pete Dunne's got the same accent, so. <laughs> well, Rockstar Spud Big huh. Maverick there did get to face Kurt Angle for the world title back in the day. Oh, yeah. So I... huh? Not not it to did. mention having a banger main event with EC3. That he did, where he got his hair shaved, yep. Yep. Uh, uh, and and having his leg broken by a willow, that was quite fun. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> willow! Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my bad. <laughs> oh, you're fine. The three willows is what led to the start of Broken Matt Hardy, which I'll be—I remember watching oh, that back in 2016. That yes, I remember watching that in 2016. What? I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? And then this whole final deletion, everything t- you know, takes over. You know. What was um Jeff Hardy's other character called? The crazy dude with the weed whacker. Oh, itchweed. Itchweed. <laughs> Oh, wow. We didn't see enough of that. confused me when he first appeared. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is that? He and was then like, he threw something at Rosemary's head, and I was like, oh, actually, yeah, I like you, but I'm still like, going for Rosemary right now. He was <laughs> like, push your mouth. Hey, man, this week, man, Jeff Harder, man, dirt, dirt. And he was like talking really fast like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely wanted to see more of Itchweed. Yeah, more of Itchweed would have been funnier. Well, yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, people would bitch because oh, it's it's characters from the Hardy Show. Like people watch the Hardy Show, they have a following. You know what I'm saying? People are gonna know who Itchweed is and all this stuff. They get it. They're in on it. Yeah, but they were only watching purely because of Jeff Hardy, not because exactly. of Matt Hardy. So yeah. I mean, I don't think you needed to know the background. I I never knew huh. about the Hardy Show, and I loved Itchweed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. There was a show. Matt Hardy. Yeah, there's they a show. Show, what, what, show oh, me the show. I had no idea they had a show. Is 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 there a box set or something? I don't think was how long was this series or was it even wasn't it even a big thing or was it a thing? Well, I remember back in the day they did show when Matt Hardy, Lita, and Edge that whole triangle thing back in '05 where he shot the poster of Lita after they broke up. So yeah, I remember that. Oh. And then he ran it over the poster with his car. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I found it on Amazon. The Hardy Show season one, twenty dollars, currently unavailable. Mm. Motherfuckers. Says you. <laughs> this was around like, the time when they did like the shoot interviews with Wade Keller. So yeah, that was around that time, like oh five, oh six. Yep, yep. The ooh, the two see three seasons, four, five, five seasons plus specials. There was a lot of like there was like pranks they did. They threw eggs at each other. It was one of those kind of things. I don't. I still like, want to see it. What like jackass, but not jackass. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Beautifully said. She said, like jackass, but not like jackass. Well, nothing. Just, you've got jackass, or it's not jackass. It's just that line, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> stupid shit, not stupid shit. Fair enough. Yeah, Dirty Sanchez <laughs> tried to fill that void. Yeah, they did. And, the yeah. <laughs> it's like the Indian doing the Foyo Virgin. And Dirty Sanchez, <laughs> that whole thing. Yep. D- Dirty Sanchez was basically the Welsh version of Jackass. Yep. And they did a lot more, I think, than uh, what Jackass did, didn't they? <laughs> they went a bit more extreme. <laughs> Just, yeah. Yeah. They, they were more yeah. about pain and rather than stupid. It reminds me of yep. when Bob Saget would get those <laughs> It's like when Bob Saget used to get those videos in America's Funniest Home Videos where that guy died after jumping off something really, really high, and they would do these stupid things that they, you couldn't air on America's Funniest Home Videos, but they would do it anyway just to be jackasses. Well, well no one actually died, though, on them shows. I know, but I'm just saying, there was somewhere the guy actually did die, the one that he sent in, and it was just ridiculous. That like Bob Saget has told that story, though. Not on Jackass, but with oh. America's Funniest Home Videos. Okay, well, apparently, there's... A few episodes of the Hardy Show on YouTube. I don't know if they're all on there. I'm gonna research it and find out. And I may have a l- late night tonight. 
Mm-hmm. Were all the episodes like six minutes? Right? Yes. Okay, yeah, then there's quite a lot. Possibly all of them. I will definitely be researching that. Hey, this is Tommy Dreamer. Hey, this is the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy. This is the voice of Killer Cross. Hey, everybody, it's the interview queen, Alicia Atute here, and you are currently listening to the Max Wrestling Podcast. What's up, everybody? This is AJ Kirsch, and you're listening to the Max Wrestling Podcast. This is the CEO of Shane Taylor Promotions and Ring of Honor superstar Shane Taylor, and you are listening to the Max Wrestling Podcast. Hey, yo, what up? It's Darby Allen. You're listening to the Max Wrestling Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Madhouse. Welcome to the Madhouse. Giving you all your wrestling information to the extreme. And right about now, we're about to take it to the Max. It's time to take it to the Max. It's time to take it to the Max. It's time to take it to the Max. And we're about to take it to the Max. Uh, this is Max Wrestling, and if you prefer your podcast in audio form only, we are on SoundCloud, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and CastBox. Cast is out! I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> It was either him saying it or me saying it, but yeah. <laughs> Nico, would you like to let it out? You want to let it out a little cast box? No. Okay. <laughs> Not as loud as you anyway. <laughs> I heard the breath, and I took my headphones off, and it was the wisest decision of my life. <laughs> yeah, at, at least he pre-warned us. <laughs> no, he didn't. I fucking heard the... And I'm like, nope. That that nope, was the nope, pre-warning. playing that shit. If, if Mike inhales, that's a warning. I, yeah, no, the warning that. is Daz saying cast biz off yes. or cast <laughs> cast box and I just throw my damn headset. <laughs> and I could like it probably woke up my son that's all the way on the other side of the damn house. Well, my dog's downstairs and it, he's just all of a sudden run up the stairs, so he definitely heard you. Trust me. Oh, I thought you were gonna say the dog started howling. <laughs> no, you would have heard him. And normally my dog kicks off at anything, so yeah. <laughs> uh, now then, last two weeks we've had some bad news. This week we have good news. It is time for shit, Max say. It's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Okay. First one. Actually, they're both hot takes, which was very brave to post. First one. I hate to say it, but Roman is better than The Rock. Okay, that's a little what? much. Come on now. <laughs> what? What? How? Yes, how? The, the Rock was on a show which had like 7 to 8 million viewers what? a week. Roman is on a show that gets like 2. Hey, hey pal, hey pal. Let's check me, let me. Hey, they named a show after The Rock's word. Mm-hmm. I don't see no tribal chief show, motherfucker. They it's fucking ridiculous. Don't get me wrong, Roman is very much improved as a heel, and he's very much improved on the mic. But I don't think anybody can touch the rock on the mic in his in his prime. <laughs> no. Hell, I don't know anybody that can touch my, uh, the rock on the mic now. Like, the guy's been out of the business for fucking years. I bet you he can still cut a fucking promo on 95% of the roster. Actually, 100% of the roster. <laughs> well, yeah, because 100% that, of the roster use scripts. I was gonna. Well, there you go. I was going <laughs> to say, the only guy that, fucking, that can get away with it would probably be Cameron Grant. Hey, man, if The Rock can go in the ring with Eugene and call the coach a popcorn fart and still just have everybody chant popcorn fart, you know. Right. You know. I'm just picturing Cameron Grimes in The Rock now. Dwayne, why'd you do this to me? <laughs> I just I was just looking up to you. <laughs> I oh, get up at 4 a.m. and go to the gym just, just like you. Matter. That'd be great. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> Look what I did. I've ruined myself. I like tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I'll invest in your little te- tequila company. <laughs> 
And when I say invest, I mean drink. I mean... There you go. Adam. So, yeah. Um, Roman better than The Rock. Very brave take, but no. No. Uh, Roman doesn't generate nearly as much profit as The Rock did, or is a household name. Everybody in Western Hemisphere knows who The Rock is. Only wrestling fans know who Roman Reigns is. Mm-hmm. Now, next hot take... Uh, not quite as controversial, but Pat McAfee and Michael Cole are a better commentary team than King and good old JR. Um, I'll punch him in the face right now. Yep. Pat McAfee's <laughs> good. Michael Cole is the worst. And even though King is terrible now, back then it worked with Jim Ross and they were a perfect team. Yep. They, they were the voice of my childhood. Voices. And trust me, it's not just nostalgia that made these guys so great because I'm going back and watching them, and they're still great. Yeah. You know who still sucks, too? Michael Cole. Oh, Michael Cole. <laughs> Michael Cole sucked for 20 years. And yet he's still fucking there. <laughs> <laughs> the great thing about King and JR was how much emotion they poured into it. Jim Ross got so bowed up. Oh, yeah, he would get mad. He would just get mad at the outcome. You son of a bitch. Like, whoa, hey. And, and he I, still I, I, does he, now a little bit. Yeah, but he's old and not as... I mean, he he can he can get as invested, but like back then, it was like he was always invested. Yeah, I was also I just want to say how much JR has improved in AEW. Like, obviously, there was some team and troubles early on, but he's really settled in. He knows who everybody is. He's not making yes. as many mistakes. We're not here in the jungle, Jack. Jack's the jungles, but the jungle, you know, he's not mixing up names and shit. I think maybe he was nervous to get back into a, a regular seat originally, and now he's just back in his flow. Yep. Ah, oh, you son of a bitch, why'd you do that? Love that. <laughs> so there we go. Shit marks say two hot takes, and we don't agree with either of them. Well, I got one more real quick. Okay, I love, I, it. I love it when you guys have some, because I don't know anything about them. Because I was scrolling on TikTok and I was just like, might as well. And there was a dude, because like, this is what TikTok is for. That you know, you fucking post words as you're doing a video. The entire thing was like arguments between WWE fans and AEW fans. And the fucking the first thing that is on this video is AEW fans saying like, oh, I, it was I forgot what the fucking music. I think it was like SpongeBob or Squidward bitching or something like that. Yeah, that Squidward bitching. And uh, the whole thing was it was uh, AEW fans don't watch Ring of Honor. And then I looked down at the comments, and every motherfucker is agreeing with this dweeb. Oh, the AEW fans have never even heard what Ring of Honor is. What's a Ring of Honor? All this other stuff. And so I just politely wrote, you do know that like 80% of AEW's roster made Ring of Honor famous again, right? That's not true. I was like, Young Bucks, SCU. Kenny Omega, who when he come when he came in from time to time, I was like, you know, uh, fucking who else is on that got in the AEW roster that was Ring of Honor? I named me lame named them, but it was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> are you like I get that you're all stupid, like that's fine, <laughs> I understand that. I, I'm not gonna get over that fact, but it's like, like how naive, like fucking you know, Colt Cabana, Colt Cabana was Mister Ring of Honor for fuck's sake. Like, you kid me? Hey, man, when it comes to Cole Cabana, I was there when it was him and, um, excuse me, Christian Cage taking on Christopher Daniels and <laughs> Brian Danielson, and Cole Cabana goes for an Asahi moonsault onto Christopher Daniels. Dude was coming up short, and he legit yelled to Christopher Daniels to catch him, and I about died. It was hilarious. Oh, that's the TNA days. Well, no, that was Ring of Honor. It was Christian Cage. Oh, was yeah, Christian Cage was in Ring of Honor for two Big shows. Christian Cage was Ring of Honor. <laughs> so, <laughs> you some bitch. <laughs> he, did, he, did, he did the tag match and he did a one on one match with Christopher Daniels. So yeah, Christian Cage did Ring, Ring of Honor. Matt Hardy in 05, 06 did Ring of 05 did Ring of Honor. I know. Oh, that's, that's right. Yeah, the Hardy brothers weren't they fucking Ring of Honor champs or something like that? Oh no, well, 
the thing too, oh yeah, the Ring of Honor Tag Jams, but back in like early 03 after Jeff got released and he did Will Willow, the Wisp and Ring of Honor, man, and he was all out of his mind, like that sucked and I felt bad and they booed him out the building and they wanted Matt and then we got Matt in 05 and he had some matches with Christopher Daniels, he had some matches with Homicide, he debuted the move known as the Scar, you know what I'm saying, that he does when he was the, uh, of the ice pick as he called it when he was cold-blooded Matt Hardy, so there's a lot of, you know, lineage and evolution of his maneuvers there in Ring of Honor as well. Yeah, I'm not surprised Willow didn't get over in Ring of Honor. They're not really high on gimmicks. It's all wrestling. You gotta you say, it. they just don't know something good when that's when it's in front of them. That's what that problem. As you gotta say it correctly. Wrestling. No, Willow. Willow. Oh, I thought you meant wrestling. No, Willow. <laughs> when he's talking. Okay. About Wait, Ring of Honor he... didn't like Willow. Hello? Wait, hold on. What? You also got to say it right like this. When he was feuding with Magnus, this son of a gun said, Magnus, your reign has no effect on me because I have an umbrella. All right, you know what? Was... Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna see Drake Maverick style. Yes? <laughs> Willow, your magic has no effect on me because I've got an umbrella. <laughs> 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 Well, first and foremost, that reminds me... Or our ice didn't like Willow because he's a gimmick. <laughs> Do you remember when him and EC3 were going to find Willow at the ring? Do you yes, remember that match? I remember. I remember. Uh, <laughs> Drake Maverick was terrified of Willow. First and foremost, would you, was. Would, you rather have, would you rather have EC3 and Spud invade Willow or would Spud try to get the TNA title from AJ Styles? And he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Then he's singing God that. Save the Queen. Do you know what I mean? That was great. And it also was very confusing because why did AJ just leave his but world right championship in right in the living room? Oh. Why? How did he get in his living room? That's what I couldn't work out. I was like, how the fuck did you even get in there? I'll pick the lock. <laughs> Thanks for that, Spud. <laughs> oh, man. I could get used to this. I'll do the other podcast in a Brummie accent, how about that? Would you rather talk like Drake Maverick or Mason Ryan? Oh, Mason Ryan's easy, you know, he's from my, my side of the country, isn't he? <laughs> right. Mason, wow. Drake, space apart, social distancing, got it. <laughs> this, this is just a trip inside my head this week. I'm just going to say, damn. If that's what it's like in your head, I don't want to know what it's like in mine. So, yeah. <laughs> it, it could be the coffee. Yeah, that, that don't, that'll that help. Yeah. I haven't had coffee yet today. That's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to get hurt. <laughs> now then, um, we have the Demon S with us this week in human form, who's been making a presence known on Ryan Squared lately. Uh, we have a new little feud in our midst. So where did this come from? They're dweebs. <laughs> she don't like dweebs. Acting like a bunch of fruit bootays. <laughs> That's a good one, I like that one. Well... Uh, she will be taking on all three of them, Louis Sutcliffe, Ryan Sutcliffe, and Ryan Taylor, uh, against the Demon <laughs> in the first ever three-on-one promo exhibition at Trivia Takeover 6 Morsel Conflict on June 24. Plus, the double champ, the Phoenix, has a tough night ahead of him as he will first defend the Max Wrestling World Championship against the queen of RWT herself, the Latino Liege, Mona Lynn. Mona Lynn. You know what they say, fight fire with fire, although I'm not sure how logical that is because that would just spread the fire. Mm -hmm. Wait, hey, Billy Joel, we didn't start the fire, but in actuality, we are starting some fires right now, bro. Well, they, they yeah. starting fire. We got a phoenix fire. and some heat. Mm-hmm. That heat. Uh, anyway, it's the third part of the trilogy as the phoenix also will be defending a promo championship against Moses Marquez as they look to finally settle a score. Good times. <laughs> And of course, Trivia Takeover marks the anniversary of the Knowledge Championship five years this year. And as such, it's the return of the Champions Chase. A team of four, including Chad Malcolm, Ella J, Travis and Moses, will challenge Mike for the Knowledge Championship as they look to build up some team time and make it back safely on the pre-launch show before the final dash on the main show. 
It all goes down June 22nd and 24th. Go to matchwrestling.net slash takeover6 for more information. I look forward to it. Travis has been doing his studying, and Travis has been doing the damn thing in trivia. Mo, you're doing your thing as always. And, you know, we got Ella coming back, which is nice. And then you got Chad. Why? Because he has to be in there. <laughs> because we own that ass. That's why. Yeah. I'm just looking forward to taking down three people who keep on trying to abuse that side of uh, my head a lot recently, especially Louie. Ryan's hey, now officially... Ryan is officially... Uh, Terrified, and you can't even say um, that part of me's name. <laughs> and Louie just likes to abuse a demoness on Instagram until she told him she had bigger balls than him, and he got very offended. So, yeah. <laughs> She's been talking a lot recently. I know that much. Well, when Ryan Sutcliffe calls you a crackpot, man, that's not why. <laughs> No, it wasn't. Pushing the wrong buttons, pal. Yeah, I don't he think these guys know what was. they got themselves into. But you all warned him. Travis we did. Warned, as is what you've all warned him and said, do not mess with a demon. But they just want to, they just kept on poking at her with a stick. Hey, all we've all been. Brown rocks, I forgot. <laughs> hey, we've all been in the demoness's lair, so we all understand. They don't. Well, yeah, if, they, if they don't know, now they know, man. If you don't know by now, oh. we didn't want you to know. It goes back to John Cena. There it is. Mm, yeah, but they will know soon enough. They will know soon enough. <laughs> uh, well, actually, with you being on the show, uh, yes. it is a year ago and a couple of weeks that we had The Shape versus The Demoness in the promo exhibition. Was it? Oh, wow. Well, that's awesome. What was the date? It Mike, was... Mike, Mike, you're usually good with these things. <laughs> all right, I'll go back and tell you straight up at down like six o'clock. Uh, First of all, it was May. Got, it on. was May twelfth. Okay, May twelfth. First and foremost, I was going to do the plug, man, because now that you ruined it, I was going to do a plug while I was looking this up. What did I ruin? Because I was going to say, if you guys want to go on maxwrestlinguk.weebly.com, we give you your stats and facts. Y'all better get yourself intact. We got promo exhibitions. We got trivia challenges. We got predictions championships. We got a combination of all three. Get your ass on maxwrestling.uk.weebly.com. CD-ROM. We the bomb. Woo! Well, it's a good job I ruined it because it's maxwrestling.net. Well, we also got (laughs) maxwrestling.com. It's the same thing. Also, it's the same fucking thing. As the also, demoness isn't here right now, happy anniversary to the demoness and the shapes then. On our first bout. There yes. we go. How about that? Tore it down on post to <laughs> post. Yes. Uh, you know what other yeah. website we got, Mike? What's the website? You gotta respect Evan Oh, love him. <laughs> Miss him and I love him. Okay. Um... But there's no dynamite this week because on the show because on it's Friday. tomorrow night. It's tomorrow. It wasn't on last night. It was tomorrow, thanks to the NBA. I'm However, about that. <laughs> I, I was straight up almost cried last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was a sad, lonely, lonely night. Fear not though, because we do have double or nothing to predict. Yay! And Yay. there is ten matches. Oof. This is going to be a very late Sunday because AEW right. tends to go over anyway. I got a 12-pack waiting. <laughs> was it you said yesterday? Unless you're drunk, then you've that's, done something wrong. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what I wrote in the TSK. I was like, if I don't wake up on Monday hungover, then I did something wrong. <laughs> hey, well, if uh, I don't after, wake up on Sunday uh, hungover, I did something <laughs> wrong. There you go. <laughs> after, after, today, after today, I'm like kid-free all weekend so i'm like yeah <laughs> yeah it's gonna be like i was hammered sunday i was hammered monday tuesday i still want to know how mike jolly was the morning after the royal rumble because he was still playing my drinking game i gave up on it <laughs> oh god yeah no i can't what is it i'm kid free saturday and tomorrow i'm not having a clue what's going on yet because everyone's not here so that's gonna be fun <laughs> but, well monday's uh, memorial day so i'm off of work so Mm, I think I'll probably have a hangover tomorrow, Saturday, and then be dying on Sunday. So, yeah, it could work. Could work. There you go. Uh, yeah, I'll be dying Monday. I'll be getting done. Oh, Travis, Today, turn your phone tomorrow, on Saturday, Saturday, and Sunday. Huh? <laughs> yeah, damn. 
I can't. Or you'll get drunk called by the demoness again. You don't want that happening. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you, call, you call me Saturday and <laughs> your little birthday party, <laughs> and I'm going to have drinks with you. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair enough. We'll do it that way. <laughs> I can't enter this conversation because I'm straight edge, so I'll just let y'all talk on that one. But are you though? <laughs> have have your have yourself a couple of cokes. You'd be all right. Get you a sugar yeah, rest. Just, uh, just not in powder form. No, uh, he's, that, he's, he's on that cheer wrong. wine shit. First and foremost, you you <laughs> stop disrespecting cheer wine. That is the drink of North Carolina, and you got a friggin' no, the fuck it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> Oh. You want to make money on that, man? Cheer wine, the home of the North Carolina, man. It's the drink of the Carolinas, no. brother. No, it's not. You never had cheer wine? It's like when bullies go to therapy. I've had cheer wine, but it's gross. <laughs> no, I know it's gross. I just I, I saw a TikTok about it, and it was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen. Or have a shandy. I gotta send it to you guys. <laughs> I gotta find it. <laughs> Ew. All right. Yeah, let's... Mike, you can have a shandy. That one's not too bad. All right. Well, hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you can also get alcohol-free alcohol. Yeah, you can get alcohol. Uh, was it alcohol-free beer? What is the point in that shit? Seriously. <laughs> the beer taste. Mm. Yeah, which you have to get accustomed to anyway. Yeah, that's true. You really do. Like you. Yeah. Like I used to always think as a kid, like oh, I'd just be able to crack a beer and it'd be no yeah. big. No, no, no. <laughs> that is not, not like the light beers. You're like, oh, I'll get used to those. You never really get used to them. Then you're like, oh, I'll get these strong ones. Those you'll like, and either you either you love them or you hate them. That's what I've gotten to the point where like the strong darker beers. You're either gonna love them or you're gonna hate them. And I'm yeah. like a hate kind of guy. Like or eight I can years old, you want to sip? Yeah, I want to sip. <laughs> Or I right. could just be, or I could just be CM Punk and laugh at drunk people like he talked about in the bar. <laughs> Do it. That's Do the it. fun Dude. part when someone else is drunk and you sit stand there watching them laughing. That is always fun. Much I, fun I to get drunk and drunk and laugh at drunk people. Yep. I can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> Good step. Okay, on the pre-show of Double or Nothing, we have the NWA Women's Title on the line: Serena D versus Riho. We hope. I'm going Serena Deep. Yeah, pretty safe bet. I I think it's just going to be a banger of a match. Yeah. I definitely wouldn't expect a title change like that on a pre-show. I no, and then on top of that, I don't even think Homegirl uh, is working working at all with NWA Riho. Yeah, exactly. It, it's just kind of like weird. She barely even works with AEW. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, is, that, is that a full house for Serena Deeb? Full yes. house. Um, yes. All right. Yep, yep. Um, strangely, this is not on the pre-show. I'm sh- pretty sure it usually is, but I'm guessing it's going to be the opening match instead. Casino Battle Royal for a future AEW world Battle, title. Oh, Battle Royal. Battle Royale. Battle Royale. Sorry. <laughs> Don't. Let's not get into that one. <laughs> Too soon. I've seen Battle Royale maybe twice. 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 So we have. There you go, Trav. <clears throat> no, I'm not going to shout like Mike, but I am going to take a breath for this. Christian Cage, Matt Seidel, Powerhouse Hobbs, Pan- Penta El Zero Miedo, Jungle Boy, Matt Hardy, Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy, The Blade, Evil Uno, Colt Cabana, Preston Vance, Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., Max Caster, Asshole, Anthony Bowen, QT Marshall, Nick Camarotto, Dustin Rhodes, Lee Johnson, and TBA. You missed one. Who did I miss? Nick Camarotto is not Nick Camarotto. You get that right, sir. He is Beard Envy. Beard Envy. <laughs> You said asshole. Does that count? That's Max yeah. Caster. Oh, okay, yeah. that counted though. I think. I I TBA. I don't know who's a free agent. Who doesn't have a no compete clause? I can't think of a guy that would show up just to give the big giant middle finger to WWE. Speed all Mike Bailey. Maybe uh, Impact or New Japan. My guess would be like Moose. 
Oh, I was thinking great. that earlier too, but he pretty much already has his title shot. So, so let him show up anyway. Oh, fuck. No, I'm just playing. Um, I don't EC3. Dope. That would be dope. Oh, EC3. Oh, he's out on energy. Uh, That's injury, right. He's injured again. He? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's he not going to be anybody from not. New Japan. They they have like a COVID lockdown in Japan right now, so I don't I don't know what I don't know if they're locked down, but COVID's hitting pretty bad again out in Japan, so I don't know yeah. what's going on. What about oh, Rich Swan? Oh God, please no! No, <laughs> I don't I don't want it to no. be. <laughs> Just no, I don't need that fucking guy on AEW. Is there anybody I, I, I have from enough like negativity previous? in my life? Is there anybody from like previous releases that you've Samoa Joe? Up? Uh, Ooh, Robert. Oh, <laughs> you know what? No, I'm gonna off this call right now. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> when it comes to, to when it comes to Joe, like we we've seen him in the Impact stuff for Slam Anniversary. We also did see those things with Yes and Forgotten. When it comes to Forgotten, I'm thinking that's going to be Steve Cutler because that's Deanna Perazzo's boyfriend. So I'm mm-hmm. thinking she's going to go to Impact. I don't know about the other two though. Oh, I have a perfect well, idea of who. Who? Oh. ELP, baby. El Fantasmo. Ooh. Nice. I could say that. I mean, he just started working with Impact. I mean, he's not a free agent, but I mean, it's a New Japan guy that's in the States right now. Yeah. It could be Rocky Romero. It's another guy who I have a funny feeling is going to be working long term with AEW as of late because he's, I'm hearing he's living in the States right now. So let me, let me ask about this, Daniel Brown. What's the situation with that? Or does anybody? His time's not up yet. Oh, wait, what about Andrade? But Ooh, I never there... thought of that one. That that match between him and Kenny Omega is already set in stone. Yeah, for August. Yeah, so I mean, you could build to that. But I'm also hearing Daniel doesn't want to do anything in the U.S. right after his release. I hear, I'm hearing he wants to go to Mexico. I haven't heard nothing about Daniel Bryan. Like, I, yeah, I've heard not even so Meltzer seems to know little... anything. I've well, you gotta so understand. I watched the Total it. Divas and the Bellas and all that shit, and all he ever talked about was, "If I ever leave WWE, I'm going to Mexico. I'm going to Mexico. I'm going to Mexico." It's a thing that he loves to talk about. And my wife looks at me, "What the fuck's up with Mexico?" I was like, "They have yeah, a lot but... of traditions out there that that he loves, like the the masks, the hair, you know, hair versus mask matches, stuff like that." I was like, "He's dying yeah. for a hair versus mask match." Yeah, I know he is because he's said it on multiple occasions. Well, he's also been talking a hell of a lot about Kenny Omega, too. That's true. I don't know. Like, it. that's... I pretty much have it narrowed down to TBA and uh, Christian Cage. But with all the feud with Team Taz and Christian Cage, I feel like it's still a little too early for Christian Cage to get that title shot. Yeah, I also think it would be maybe too obvious to be Christian Cage. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm going for a curveball, Jungle Boy. Hey, uh, hey, you fucking go, pal. No, I like your style. Uh, I'm going back and I'm gonna. I got it pulled up. Like everybody that's in there, I'm gonna look at it again. Yeah, I don't expect everybody to remember the whole names that I rattled off. Except except for maybe Max Caster, asshole. <laughs> yeah, except you can't forget that fucking guy. Uh, Mike, have you got a pick? I was going to say Christian too, but it seemed kind of obvious. But in a way, I would also say Christian because him and Omega. Would be mm-hmm. cool. It would be a great match. No doubt about it. I don't think it's going to be Griff Garrison or Brian Pillman Jr. or Asshole Caster and Anthony Bowens. I think Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall have their thing in Camarado and the Lee Johnson and the Nightmare Factory with Cody. Um, mm. Matt Hardy, fuck no. Um, I, is, I'm thinking, I can only think besides Jungle Boy, I've got one other guy in this match that's not I, Christian Cage that I feel like can win it. Otherwise, it's TBA for me. And that one other guy is Penta. Yeah. Yep. Is well, that, is, uh, Penta's pretty much been already had his run with Kenny Omega. Yeah. That's I was kind of thinking. I was kind of thinking Matt Seidel. Oh God, no! no I don't need to see this. No. Fucking, Slipping on the road. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, like I get it, but at the same time, you know, it's not who I would want. 
but I'm just trying to look at the possibilities. I'm like, Matt Seidel or, you know, Colt Cabana, you know? Boom, boom. Unless it's going to be like freaking Matt Hardy. No, TBA. I'm leaving it alone. TBA. All right. That's one for TBA. Uh, is Andy Williams injured because the Blade's in the match, but he isn't? I don't know. Oh, no, 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 no. He's probably on tour. Oh, gigging. He's still, okay. he's still in his band, and I'm pretty sure his band has uh, released a new album. All right, then. That, that's All fair right. enough. God, so, what band is he in? Um, shit, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I got a computer right in front of me, and I grabbed my phone. What the hell? <laughs> Who is there any, is there anybody that's been injured on the AEW roster that could be back right now that we Ooh. may have? Um, well, two people who are not in the match that are no longer a tag team. There's Kazarian and Daniels. It could be Kazarian. I could see that. Nah, I still like I still like the the the, the idea of like somebody cool. I, don't yeah. know, I still have a bad feeling it's gonna be like Moose. It's gonna be it's not gonna, it's gonna be cool, but it's not gonna be like over the top. Yeah, I, I, I'm there with you. I'm going TBA. Fuck it. All right. Uh, Nicola? Nicola, who are you picking? She's got, she's muted. She's picking muted. her nose. I have no, no, I'm right here. I'm right here. Sorry, I was boiling the kettle and there's a washing machine going off and I didn't really want you all to hear the background noises. But uh, uh, I have no clue who to go with on that one. <laughs> uh, Christian Cage? All right, well, yeah, go. somebody's going for the safe bet. Yeah. Really? I'm going to join her. I will also go with you the safe. stick him with Cage. Yeah. I got it I got it on a, a Bleacher Report, and they put their predictions on there, and uh, they went with Cage as well. Because they're fucking mocked. <laughs> Goddamn Bleacher Report. What? Follow yeah, that's... bastards for years. They're a bunch of marks. What just, if, for the just, simple, just for the simple fact that they went with Christian Cage is why I was not to go with Christian mm-hmm. Cage. What, what if the final two are just about to go over the top rope as TBA comes out and it's negative one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... Oh, it's fucking Omega, pop like nobody's yeah, business, boy. I mean, it's, it's not... Yeah, they're they're going to do that so far that could go nuts. Yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> and he 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 just got his new ring music. So yeah, uh, shown to him by Cody, who currently has the worst music, thanks to Snoop no, Dogg. No, not anymore. Because come Sunday, you gotta. Is get he your finally changed? Has, has he announced this? Back. Has he announced he's going back to his original theme? Yes. Oh, thank you. It's all over fucking Bye-bye social Bible media. Says. That's goddamn right. You better get your Bibles ready. Rest <laughs> in peace, Snoop Dogg version. Ready. You were not loved. <laughs> Oh my god, I cannot wait for Sunday. It's going to get fucking loud. I mean, it makes it's sense. It, it makes sense to go back to that theme because there's so much hype around him being the American dream and everything that the yep. Snoop Dogg song just wouldn't work. Fuck no. Every time he'd come out, all you'd ever hear is someone go, Snoop Dogg, again! <laughs> yep, every time, we'd, we'd, we'd be it. like, up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. No, it's still fucking stupid Snoop. God damn it. Yeah, because yeah, it gets to that. Me, goddamn Snoop. <laughs> it, it gets to that point in the song where it's about to drop and then it just turns into Snoop Dogg. Ah. Oh. Yeah, it's yeah, just the ultimate exactly. buzzkill. <laughs> You're all, all like, is people it? people to be the buzzkill, though, right, Snoop Dogg? Yeah. <laughs> How does but, that work? <laughs> I have no idea. Conve- Ironically, the first line in the song is adrenaline, and as soon as you hear Snoop Dogg, the adrenaline just goes away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't wait to sing my Bible says. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, well, let's go with that match next then. Cody Rhodes for one night only, the American Dream rather than American Nightmare, versus Anthony Agogo. And for some reason, it's all about USA versus UK. Makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, I don't get that. I really don't. <laughs> well, and they also put the flag on the Cody, so you know. It's just it's something to base off of. Yeah, of course it is. I mean, now, I mean, I would not be surprised if this turns into a long-term thing 
where they end up having like a flag match. Mm. I'm sorry. This is just this is 80s booking written all over it. This is got Death the Road back in the Georgia days, baby. This is this is what I'm talking about. It's this like is, when this is what this is right now. It's actually flag match style. I I hate flag matches, and I remember WWE some, did something really stupid once, where they had both flags above the ring, and they raised the winning flag into the rafters where you couldn't see it, so all you could mm-hmm. see was the losing flag. Was that the one with La Resistance? I think it yep. was USA versus France. Yeah. Yes, it was. Because <laughs> I'm watching that in my head right fucking now because yeah. it just made. No goddamn sense. But you've just completely gone against the whole point of a flag match. <laughs> anyway, um, it's it's a tough one for me to call this because logic says Cody Rhodes should win, but at the same time, you don't really want to bury quote Anthony Ogogo. Cody don't, don't like gotta him. win. He don't gotta, but the storyline makes sense for him to have this big heroic win. You know what? It's got the written the the writing is all over the walls on this one. You you give these guys fifteen, sixteen minutes, maybe even eighteen. You let them go out there. You let Cody carry this entire thing. You you let this kid get get it all in. Make him work. Make him you know hit some rest holds. Hit make him have him hit the ropes. Make close lines. Stop. You know, make him do some shit. You know what I mean? Make, make this kid stop. do some shit. Make him a star. Exactly. Make him a star. And then right when the time is right. Fucking eat those punches. Eat the shit out of them. Get three, four, five in the fucking corner. Have fucking court- Cody stumbling out just for a go-go to look look right at the dude. And boom, one big shot to the jaw. Knocks the fuck out. Shocks the world. You could do it that way. Or like I said, if you're going to really build to a flag match, chicanery. Look how many motherfuckers are going to be on the side of the ring. You got QT Marshall. Camarado is going to be on the side. Probably all bandaged up like a dumb shit. And uh, who's the other dude? Uh, Aaron Swa- Solo? Yeah. Swallow? Yeah. Formerly Mr. Sol- Bailey. Yeah. Yeah, Swallow Swallow Swallow. Swallows. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Formerly Mr. Bailey. Yep. There you go. I mean, there is a way for Cody to win while making Anthony Ogogo look good, but he's got to do it just right or people are going to resent him for winning. But see, that's the thing. I really can't see that. I can't see him. Like, unless, unless it's like one of these things where unless they start going to blows, you know what I mean? Like, it turns into a shoot all of a sudden. Cody and him start exchanging hands, and then Cody just catches him, knocks him out. Oh, hey, I got caught. Any boxer can get caught. That's probably the only way this kid could lose in reality because I'm sitting here stirring it in my head, and unless Cody gets some fucking, you know, pull the tights or Arn Anderson gets involved, you're losing, bud. You are losing, bud, and you should rightfully lose. You should rightfully lose by fucking taking a, a, a... a left hand straight to the chin, and go down like a sack of potatoes. I could see, I could see like, a Cody taking a couple punches like uh, dude the other day last week. Exactly. To start like spitting up blood and whatnot, and he just spits the blood in uh, QT's face. And then QT jumps in and starts beating him up, and he gets win by could, DQ. I could totally yeah. see something like that. Yeah. Totally see something like that. I mean, it's a little bit shitty of an ending, but again, my whole gimmick is just don't even just just give him the dub. Give him the W. I mean, if it dub means Cody has to do something stupid to make himself look like a dweeb and then just get caught with a punch, hey, guess what? You're a dumbass and you got caught with a punch. Okay, Mike, what do you think? What was he going to shout? <laughs> I don't I know. I was, I was like, I took my headphones out. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love it. We got him top of the go. go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, speaking of flags. That was <laughs> where? Right. Yeah, before you go, go. Yep. Yeah, I said they invited my mother to the party. Oh, you're welcome with that, man. I'll start playing Venga Boys next if you'd like. No, thank no, you. Thanks. I have to part with no, that thanks. enough when I see her. No, thank you. <laughs> so, Anthony, a go go. You're saying Anthony? Oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. He could go back to the room. Yes, I'll go with Anthony Agogo. All right, Nicola. Um. Uh huh. 
Is that going to have to be Corey? I mean, Cody, sorry. I almost said Corey. <laughs> I heard that Corey. Oh, no. was God Corey. damn, Corey. Now, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, sorry. Cor- Cody, there we go. I say the name right now. We call him Corey a different time. <laughs> That's right, Corey and Russ. <laughs> calm, calm down, flatbread, you know. Hey, yeah. Flatbread. <laughs> Again, it's easily done. Yeah, I'm going Cody. I got to go Cody. Cody. <laughs> I can't do it, Anthony Ogogo. He's got to win. Make yourself a fucking star, because this kid's got the star quality. Well, I mean, like I said, you know, he can still be a star and still lose. No, oh, no, 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 no. Make him a fucking star. <laughs> When's what, What's going to happen if Cody loses? What's going to happen? Nothing. 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 Nothing's going to happen if Cody loses. We're going to still sing his fucking song. We're going to wait for his ass on Wednesday or next Friday. And nothing's going to change if this motherfucker loses. Nothing. But you know what will change if this fucking, if this goddamn Anthony Ogogo doesn't win in impressive fashion? We ain't going to care. You know what's going to happen when we don't care? He's going to be a mid-carder. And what happens when you're a mid-carder and you're a fucking star? You flounder in this company, you flounder in this business, and you run away. Don't do that. This kid is a fucking star. Get him up there. Get him up there now. Knock out Cody. Let's fucking move on. It ain't going to be that big of a deal. Cody can lose. Remember when Cody didn't win the world title and he never can challenge for the world title again? Are we clamoring for him to be a world champion? No. Eat a loss. Make a fucking star. Anybody, Don't be WWE. Anybody changing from Cody? Uh, nope. Yeah, go on then. <laughs> right, I'll, a good I'll, point. I'll stay with you, Travis. Thank you. So that's... I love you, Travis, but he made a really good point. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, I get what y'all are saying, but, like, I just picture, you know, if you, you could still make him a star and still get the win by, like, him just going in and beating the living shit no, and I understand out that, of but Cody. Didn't we, and then I get know, I've said the same thing about somebody else that's come in and had happened. And what happened? They didn't get that gigantic star win and they floundered because I don't fucking remember who I'm talking about, but this isn't the first time I've had this conversation. I I feel like, I feel like Cody's going to get the like crowd advantage. He's going to get that pop. He's going to be the crowd favorite. Exactly. So think I, I about know. what happens know. when he gets knocked out and loses. I am Mr. 9%. I'm sticking with Cody. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right. That That's is fine. two for Cody, three for Anthony. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> the worst. I was actually going to sing that the before worst. you did that. Fuck's <laughs> <laughs> oh, sake. We also have to remember this is the first full capacity wrestling show in over a year. Oh yes. You know I hate it though. You know why I hate it. It's fucking Florida. I know. I know. It's but, back uh, in Florida. They seem to do okay with WrestleMania, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but there was also dumb shits not wearing their mask there too. Oh, there's always. Y'all know this. That's everywhere. No one's wearing they, masks. Well, now. they, they say it's, it's not a big deal anymore as long as you're vaccinated. True. Mm. Exactly. But still. They'll, they'll wear a poncho, but not a mask. Hey, I'm going to tell you this, boy. Even though I'm going to get vaccinated, uh, I'm still wearing my goddamn mask at, like, the Walmart and shit. Oh, motherfuckers yeah. is nasty. Moses, well, actually, well, same thing. So, yeah. I'm, I'm right there. vaccinated now, so, and I'm still wearing my mask. So, yeah, there and I didn't grow an arm or turn yeah, zombie. I'm going to get my first one here in a few hours. Oh, there you go. Make my, sure you get some ibuprofen and some Gatorade. You're going to hey, be tired as fuck. <laughs> Why, yeah, why do you think I'm baby free? Why do you think I'm kid free for the weekend? And <laughs> that way I can, just in case. My uh, age group finally became eligible late last night, so uh, I'll be here Welcome soon. To Damn, for you guys, really? Yeah, the, uh, they've they been doing older ones first and just working their way down. Not well, to well, get what? crazy about what? it, but they're already like letting like teenagers take it out here, like 12 yep, to like 16. 12, 16, yep. Yep. Yeah, they're not here yet. They've not started on the... They haven't That's even said ridiculous. it yet. No, but they're in the schools. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they're in school, though. Yeah, they're not at home right now. They're in school. But they break up tomorrow. It's all good. We'll go yeah. back into crazy town. We're so backwards. We're, the thing with me... We, we really are. <laughs> the thing Fuck with you, me, Boris. 
the thing with me too is you're also going back to Texas for WWE live events, and I'm like, again, it's Texas, and also <laughs> Texas, Texas, and number. And number two, do you see it being full capacity, or do you see them doing like it did with WrestleMania, where it's only going to be X amount of people? Oh, no, it's full. Ugh. It's going to be How a daily place. They, they might go to, like, smaller venues than they did <laughs> previously, sure. but I don't know. And that's another thing that I hated about fucking Raw and SmackDown um, was, like, oh, I'm, you know, Riddle, and I'm going to be there. Come see me. Oh yeah, I'm Braun like, Strowman is the conductor. Oh, everybody was doing Express. that. Yep, Braun Strowman. Oh, the God, it got, oh that, that shit got terrible. old so fast. Well, Jeff was on it. Jeff Hardy did a nice little thing. Channing Hardy, Hardy, Hardy. What does he do? Well, Hulu, Hulu takes out half of like the shit that I care about. Good shit, so Hulu. I haven't seen Jeff Hardy in like I don't even know the last time I saw him. Uh, he in. lost last week or two weeks ago to gender, and they they hindered. Yeah. Jeff. Yeah, he lost to Jinder Mahal. Hinder the Jinder. When was the last time he won a match? Not that I'm dissing him in any way, but when was the right last time he actually crashed his car? Yeah, Elias, <laughs> with Elias in the Symphony of Destruction. Just oh, like the Pie Tiger. Yep. How long ago was that? Like last, late last year. Yeah, there's my point. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I think they said this is the most uh, consecutive loss that he's had since, like, 2000s. Yeah. So I'm like, I believe that. That sucks. He needs to win at least one. <laughs> Obviously. But no. <laughs> Fuckers. Okay, next match. Um, I'm pretty confident on this one. Sting and Darby Allin versus Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. Now, first of all, it's Sting's first actual wrestling match in a long time. Since mm-hmm. 2015, yep. Yeah since 2015 and it's also in front of a sold out crowd so initially i was going to say scorpio sky and ethan page get the win because i can see it but at the same time sting in front of a live crowd well here's the thing let me let me let me plant the seed in your head one time they're heels yeah you can do some heel shit and win yeah so there's that Well, <laughs> like like kicking Darby Allen down the stairs. Yeah, well, that was such a dick thing to do. <laughs> and then, of course, Darby's <laughs> like, you just well. want me to roll down the stairs? Yeah, you got it. Because this crazy fucker don't give a shit. Dude, I feel, I feel so bad for when this kid hits, like, 30 years old. How, 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 I used to think my knees and back broken. hurt, like, right when I turned 30. He's going to, like, he's just going to collapse. Yeah. He's just going to be ahead. He's... Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all right, guys. <laughs> hey, Darby, you've got to have a match. Hang on, I'll just grab my head. I'll be there in a second. Yeah, right. Stink and kick his head at like a ball hey, got my duct every tape. person he's having to go at. <laughs> you, know, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Keenan and Kel, two heads are better than none. Could somebody please give me my head? That's what it reminds me <laughs> It reminds me of the Black Knight from Monty Python. Yeah. Yes. You haven't got any arms or legs. Yeah. I'm invincible. Just a flesh wound. <laughs> He's all bleed all over you. <laughs> oh yeah, what are you gonna do? Bleed on me? Call it a draw. <laughs> Invincible. <laughs> I have to watch that now. God damn it. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I I'm gonna stick with Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. Uh, uh. <laughs> I, I don't I don't like it. It makes me feel bad on the inside. As much as I'm like, it's Sting and it's Darby Allen and it's the live crowd. It, you got to fucking build these geeks. Otherwise, they're going to do nothing. And, and, and letting them beat people up in the background and then losing on the pay-per-view is not building anybody up. So there's going to be some chicanery. My guess is Sting's going to get hit with his bat. And uh, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page are going to pick up a win. Yeah, it's any, fine. Anybody think any differently? Yes. I'm going to be the odd bod this time. I'll go with Steve <laughs> and Bobby Allen. Yeah, right. Not only because I've just bought his t shirt and I'm still waiting for it to turn up the Darby Allen one that is. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. T-shirt I'll go with him too. Oh, shipping takes forever. Why does AEW not have a UK store yet? 
Your Tell me about it. I ordered it last Friday and I keep looking at the train. And it's like, no, I'm still in a destination. Wish you guys like, had a hot topic. It'd be like a one stop shop. Oh, we need a hot topic so bad. Yeah, That's what need... I'm going to be doing this weekend. Come on, Tony. Is going, is going to Hot Topic because, goddamn, my man Harold went to Hot Topic and he yeah, found he the sweetest fucking Brody Lee shirt I have ever goddamn seen. And if it's there, I'm buying two of them. Tony, buy Prime. Yeah, I went and. A couple weeks ago, about two, three weeks ago, and went back to Hot Topic. Got like, think about, I think it was like eighty dollars worth of like New Japan and AEW merch. Yes, were like twelve dollars. Yeah, because they put that shit on clearance because it doesn't sell like their goddamn Twilight shirts. Fuck that stupid shit. Yeah, it was buy one get oh, two that. free, and then there was like additional clearance on top of that. I'm like, Hell dude, yeah. I need to start a pro wrestling tease here in fucking Cali. That's it. I'm doing it. That's my new. That's my new jupe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike or Travis, do you agree with Nicola? <sighs> you watch them all say no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I'm honestly <laughs> torn. But I feel like they're really trying to do something with Scorpio and Sky. At least I thought they were. But now I'm just, like, confused as to what the hell's going on. Um, uh, I'm probably going to go Darby and Sting. All right. Mike? Hey, someone join my little club. <laughs> I'm scared I'll terrorize him later. <laughs> I am going to go with Sting and the Mini Stinger. Mini Stinger, yes. Mini I like Stinger. That. That, I think they were calling him a saying Kels. I've forgotten what it's called, though. <laughs> Never Crazy. mind. Yeah, that one. That'll do. We'll go with that. Well, I'm going to stick with Sky and Paige. Mm-hmm. Because there is another tag match, and I really, really hope I'm right on this one. Young Bucks defending the tag team titles against Marx and Kingston. Please, Marks please, please Kingston. be Marx and Marks. Kingston. Yes, yes, it yes, has yes. to be Mox and Kingston. I'm not trying. To... <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to hate on the Bucks. I love the Bucks. Everybody yeah. knows I love the Bucks. But you dude, you've been... you guys beaten everybody already. Y'all ain't even had the belts that motherfucking long. Y'all beat everybody already. Like it's it's okay. You can lose them. It's not a big deal. You know what I mean? I hope they do. I, I don't. Really and, do. and, and in this and this, by the way, is not me saying I don't want John Moxley back in the title picture. By and no means am I saying this. But giving them these tag titles gives them something to do, and I'd rather them have something to do than, you know, not be on TV. And on top of that, do you really want to break these guys up? Do you want to break up that fucking awesome background banter? No, oh, they I are don't. so entertaining together. Plus, Eddie Kingston hasn't won anything yet. Exactly. Let and this he's guy too talented something. not to win anything. I love the duo with them two. They're both just, yeah, it works. I like watching them both. They're funny and... Fucking nuts. Shit, I'm sorry. Who is plus, he? He's, like we he's a rapper. Saying, Who's the other one? He's a rapper's friend. He's a rapper's friend. It's the greatest <laughs> yes. thing ever. Rapper's friend. But like we're saying, this is the first time that they've had a full crowd. you got to have a title change. And, and I'm sure we're going to get the women's title change for sure, but two mm-hmm. wouldn't kill you. Because I know the, the fucking world title ain't changing. Uh, Mike, do you agree with everybody else on Marks and Kingston? Yeah. All right, full house. Now bring yep. home those titles and bring home those shoes. Oh, yeah, and the shoes. Oh, no, they're going to wear the shoes to the ring and then win the title. Yeah, you can keep the socks. They, they got <laughs> holes in them by now. By now, it'd be hilarious. <laughs> um, we're, we're doing this one pretty late in the card. I, I actually expect this one to be on a little earlier, but... uh. I love how on Wikipedia it says Miro or Dante Martin. Yes, I was like, who the fuck is Dante Archer. Martin? <laughs> Dante Martin's not winning a TNT title tomorrow. Shut up. M- Let's just keep it simple. Miro versus Lance Archer for the TNT title. Miro. Lance. No, I don't you know. Think, Ignore uh, that. <laughs> Miro's reign's going to be that short? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I uh, I don't want it to be, though. I really don't. But, dude, are you really going to tell me that you're just going to keep fucking over Lance Archer like this? Mm. 
because that's what this is right now. This has nothing to now. I understand this has nothing to do with Miro. Nothing to do with Miro. I want that to stick in everybody's mind right now. He's he he needed to break away. He needed to win that belt. He needed to this. He needed to that. That's great. He's on the great path. But if Lance Archer doesn't win, what do you do with him? And unless you plan to let him walk away and go back to New Japan, you let him have this belt. If this belt becomes a little flippy floppy, so fucking be it. I remember another belt that was excellent. That was a great worker's belt back in the day that was flip flopped like nobody's business. It was called the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. Banger after banger after banger after banger. It didn't matter if the title changed hands because we got a banger. You know what's has me like super excited this is going to be the first match with Miro in front of a live audience since oh, yeah, he left WWE they're going to go Rusev day and I'm going to die <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to die okay <laughs> I'm going to die you... laughing I will laugh my ass off I swear I will mm-hmm. I don't know why but I just know it's going to happen, and I know it's going to be funny as hell. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to go Lance Archer as well, based on the fact that he's already lost the TNT title match once. He's already lost the world title match. He can't keep losing title matches. No. No. No, you can't. Mike? Miro. Okay. Ah, <laughs> there had to be one we couldn't convert. Well, first and foremost, I'm going to say he wins with the accolade because I refuse to call it the game over because that is so fucking yeah, dumb. Yeah, so dumb. Lame. All right, then. What else we got? Um, Just do the obvious one next. Yeah, let's do the obvious one next. Hikaru Shida defending the women's title against Dr. Brett Baker, DMD. Let me go Brett first. Baker. Go ahead, Mike, because you, you're always going last on these ones. Well, I'm polite, because I let you guys go first. I'm going to say it just because. Britt motherfucking Baker. Attaboy. And if one does not win, I will be so mad. I also choose Britt motherfucking Baker. Because here's the thing. This girl, when she was on the damn Jericho Cruise, I wanted her to get off my TV. But that girl then proved she is one of the hottest heels on that show and in professional wrestling. She can go. It's time for her to get the belt because she's going to be the focal point of the women's division. Give it to Britt Baker. And I love Hikaru Shida, but it is Britt Baker's time. Not not just one of the hottest heels. She's one of the best women going right now. Yeah. All yeah. right. Facts. Like I said, I took off minus five because of what she said after the Thunder Rosa match where she hoped she got five stars with the Dave Meltzer thing. That kind of <laughs> took off five points for me. <laughs> oh, my God. Why? Because why? It, should not be, it should not be wanting to impress Dave Meltzer. It's about Who? putting on a performance. What if we, it was a joke? It was a gimmick. All right. Even was if it all was a gimmick. <laughs> but the fact that she even had to mention it is ridiculous. I don't care oh if it was Oh, my stuff. goodness. Yeah, I, I, I would assume she was being sarcastic. I know, but still. <laughs> Yo, I don't know if I've ever said you mentioned it on the Meltzer, air, but I'm going to say, say it right now. The only reason motherfuckers hate Meltzer is because he made a job out of our fucking life's dream. That's why we yeah. hate this motherfucker. That's why. Because this motherfucker gets paid, and he gets paid top dollar to just no wrestling. That's it. He's been studying since the 70s, and he's known it now. Yeah, does he love New Japan? Fuck yeah, I fucking love New Japan too. If I got some look at the shit we're watching on WWE, NXT, all this other shit. None of that shit is fucking even fun. I watch New Japan, I'm intrigued. So yeah, I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna fucking like him a little bit more. Are you kidding me? Shit, everybody wanna hate on the guy because the dude makes millions of dollars just watching wrestling. And then being on documentaries. I hate his ass too. I, I wish I was his ass, but yeah, uh, respected. Is, is, you want well, me to take it, Mike? No, hold on. Well, is it a, is it a California thing, and Californians got to stick together? No, All because right. he, because here's the thing. Because I used to never know who Dave Meltzer was, neither. It had nothing to do with being in Cali. I always thought Brian Alvarez was on his own. I never knew he worked with Dave Meltzer. And when I found that out, I got into it. I used to think that Dave Meltzer was a was just like what everybody else thinks, a fucking dweeb who has an opinion who just so happens to get paid for said opinion. But then the thing is, is he's just been doing this for fucking fun forever. He just so happens to get paid. 
and he turned it into a fucking thing. All right. He's a he's a wrestling historian who gets paid, and we hate I'm him sorry. because of that. I'm sorry, but he's no Bill After. Come on. I didn't say he was Bill After. I'm just saying though. I just I don't see it. I just and how much money does Bill After make doing this? Exactly. <laughs> So why do we hate? Why is it we hate on Dave, but we can't hate on Dave after? Why is it we can hate on Dave, we can't hate on the guys from PW Insider? Why is it we can hate on Dave, but we can't hate on the guys that wrote WWE Magazine, that wrote all this other bullshit? Why is it we can't hate on these cats, but we have to hate on Dave Meltzer? Because he tells you the truth. He tells you the things y'all don't want to hear. True. That New Japan was better. That Kenny Omega is the real McDeal. Like Kuchiko Okada is the second coming of Ric Flair. That John Moxley was way better off leaving <laughs> WWE. I could go on for days. I will. Yes, say. I will defend that cat. And it, it, and you know what? Because you put it like that, yeah, it's 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 half because we from Cali, even though he's NorCal. <laughs> but I'm That's saying you also talk market. about Brian Alvarez, and I'm sorry, but this guy could talk about his independent stuff. He will always be Dave Meltzer's bitch. No, and I'm not. Hey, I'm not going. I'm not going to backtrack on that one. His independent stuff was not was not very good. And by not very good, I mean, hell, in the '90s, anybody could have did some shit and been decent. You know what I mean? And good for you. Good for you for being able to write a book and making something out of out of nothing. You know what I mean? And for that, I commend him for it. So now, I'm a fan so of his content who? because of said content. His indie so, scene. Thank God I wasn't a fan of indie wrestling in the '90s. So who's going with Britt Baker on this? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the fact that we have to bring this up like he's God when he's not. I'm not impressed by a 60-year-old man. But nobody <laughs> said he was God. He just so happens to be the guy that does star ratings. Who started doing them for fun. And now wrestlers take the shit for real. So but we're they getting, but again, we're, it, but who are we getting mad at? Are we getting mad at the wrestlers for taking it for real? Or are we getting mad at the dude? Just in general. All right, go to the next one. <laughs> Older in the coat. <laughs> yeah, I just did the break up the brawl ring bell ring. Oh, I know, I thought that. I was, I was like, like not a real WCW in here. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, think oh, that's yeah. a, I think that's a debate for a whole episode one day. I'm, but, just, uh, yeah. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm not. <laughs> is, is anybody that, yeah, not saying go. Brit motherfucking Baker? Brit no. motherfucking Baker. Brit motherfucking Baker. Crown this lady. Crown me. Okay, then. That leaves us with the... Okay. The two big matches of the show. First up, Stadium Stampede, Pinnacle versus Inner Circle. If Inner Circle lose, they must disband forever. We we got three matches left. Yeah, three. What else did I miss? Wait a minute, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Oh, yeah. That one should have been done earlier, too. Hangman versus Brian Cage. Um, Brian Cage. Hangman. This is one of the ones. It's, it's, you know what, Mike? Go ahead. I want to hear what Mike got to say. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Brian Cage. Oh, that's it. You have no explanation. <laughs> it's Brian Cage. It's Brian Cage. Okay. Not Brian. Here's my whole, Cage. Here's my thing on this because, like, I he already lost to Brian Cage once. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was some chicanery. He can do it again. You build Brian Cage. I like that. Hangman, right now, I feel like he's he's a he's he's in a rut. You know what I mean? If I feel like if he loses, the heel turn is beyond imminent. But I feel like if he wins, he's kind of just floundering. You know what I mean? He's 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 the good guy that we all like and we want to love him, but he's just kind of there. And I don't know if that's maybe I'm overthinking that. That's probably just me overthinking it. Eh, give me Hangman then. You know what? It's it, it, it's the the people, it's the whiskey. It's the hangman. Make it the hangman. Whiskey's and gravy. There you go. Hi. <laughs> uh, Travis? Uh, I have no idea. Like, I'm trying to... See, I don't think... My, my, my thing is, is like, with it being the... the got the crowd, you know? So, so they're going to try to get that pop. You know what I mean? But at the same time, they can't overdo the pops, and all the fan favorites can't always win. What do you mean you can't overdo the pops? It's the first time you're back in the arena. Why wouldn't you do that? Why, know, would, why you wouldn't gotta, you be a show not WWE-based and give the people what they want? Because that's the best damn thing about AEW is because it's not predictable like WWE. That's true. 
Mm. So they have to keep that. That's true. Because even if the fans don't get what they want, they will still pop, just not in a positive way. You know what I mean? You know, I get so, you, you'll still get a reaction. I got you. Yeah. So the you still got to have that heel heat. So I okay. don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Brian Cage. Fuck it. Brian motherfucking Cage. Brian motherfucking Cage. Okay. Okay. Now Stadium Stampede. Um, I don't want Pinnacle. the inner circle to disband. <laughs> I fucking love I do. What? <laughs> you get the that's twice. You fucking say one more <laughs> stupid thing. You're fucking out of here, pal. <laughs> you talking to me? I fucking chopped down like I did my five minutes ago. God damn it! No, what? So, Why you went in a circle to break up? I, yeah, I right? that's why I'm done. So confused. I mean, because, don't get me wrong. I'd love okay. Sammy to have a fucking uh, singles run, but I don't want him to break up. I, I get the feel that, like, when I think AEW, you know, I think Inner Circle. I think Kenny Omega. I think the Ely, you know. But now I want to think Ely Pinnacle, you know. I want Pinnacle on top. And I feel like the only way they can get on top is by destroying and putting an end to the inner circle. I would hate for the inner circle to be over, but I think their time is up, and it's time for the pinnacle to be the pinnacle. Goddamn, Trab makes too much sense. <laughs> inner circle, <laughs> one yeah, bloody yeah, guts. Just five, just five minutes ago, he's like, say one more stupid thing and you're off the show. <laughs> Inner, inner Circle did win blood and guts, so this would make them equal, and then that would lead to another match. The rubber match. I don't want another match. I don't want another match. I don't want to see any more of oh, no, That simple. I let's, don't like Let's it. just think about this for a second. But, now. What, but what would the third match be? What the fuck else could you... What crazy ass shit could you do? In front of a crowd? Because Stadium Stampede is not going to be in front of a crowd. That's going to be pre-taped on the other side of the arena. Yeah. You can do Bunkhouse. I mean, Blood and Guts had a decent crowd, but I would imagine they would want their third and final match potentially in front of a sold-out crowd. Possibly. Yeah, but are you really going to do another Blood and Guts match? Let's do a triple cage. Fucking <laughs> like <it>, bananas. <laughs> let's, let, let, let's have a, the double cage with another cage on top of that cage. Yes. <laughs> And, and, let, and let's bring, and let's bring back Jimmy King. Oh, yeah. Jimmy King! I will and rule you. you. And while you've got all them cages, add Monster Ball to that as well. And you've just yes. got, yeah, a fun still day. <laughs> let's make a double cage lethal lockdown. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I've watched that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Ben Trusso is writing all of this down. It's <laughs> But to get back to the match, it's double or nothing. Pinnacle's yeah. going to double up on the win, and Inner Circle will become nothing. That's what's going to happen. There we go. But it's double <laughs> or nothing, not double and nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mike? I'll go with the Inner Circle. Okay. Any reason? Nah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, Main Ni- event. <laughs> Nicola. Hello. Are we here? Who's your pick? <laughs> Goddamn, my trap jump of the gun. <laughs> um, uh, um, I've just listened to every. Uh, suppose, who was it again? The Inner Circle and who? The Pinnacle. The Pinnacle. Pinnacle. Team Jericho yeah. versus Team NJF. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jericho. <laughs> Don't like MJF, so Jericho. <laughs> all right, Travis, you're all alone there. I don't Sorry, well, I know, because here's hey, my thing. You like, know I'm... I like it that way. You know I like it that way. <laughs> so, Terrible. He also knows how much I hate MJF, so... <laughs> no, I, mean... hey, I have I have more reason than any one of you I know to you do. hate MJF because he called my son ugly. Okay? That shit was great. <laughs> Great. It's the greatest moment of the, uh, of the RWT. 
I, don't I did offer to set the ice cream for you, but you said no. <laughs> I mean, I can see, I can see it with the inner circle losing, and then we get like the whole curtain call, you know, uh, hug it out, click thing, like you know, back that destroyed kayfabe many, many moons ago. I could see that happening. You know, gives everybody their chance to to go on their own. Jericho does probably nothing. Probably goes on tour with Fozzy. Hager does something. Sammy Guevara gets relevant again, and Santana and Ortiz get back uh, in the t- title pictures. Fozzy is going on tour in July. Well, I do know, I do oh, know well, Fozzy go. is going back on tour. Yeah, when the 14th of Maybe July is the first night of the tour. Then I hate you fuckers and give me the pinnacle. Uh, I, I mean, just because he's going on tour doesn't mean he has to. He can't take a break from the inner circle. No, I get that, but at the same time, I guess that that's just like a perfect out. It well, allows everybody to do their thing. Flash. And it goes with the name. But... I think my uh, thing with is they lost last year, Jericho's team, the inner circle there, so I'm going to say they win this year. That's why. Yeah, that's what I keep thinking, too. Dude, there's but a lot I, of elements I, to this. Yeah, that's the great thing about it, though, isn't it? You yeah. just don't know because it is that's unpredictable. This, that is what this shit is all about, and that's why I'm, a, I'm proud to say I'm an AEW mark. So, you know what, though? I love how we usually always um, – base our predictions on Jericho matches on when he's going on tour with Fuzzy. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I might do it, I guess. <laughs> he, he has done both before. He's uh, gone on tour and still competed. That's what happens when TK is your good friend and he'll let you borrow the plane. Oh, yeah. fuck, you know, give me the goddamn inner circle. They can't, they can't disbar I'm, yet. Yeah, can't. I'm sticking with inner circle. Oh, I can't. I want to see him have a good face run before they break up. They yeah, and face right now, that, that's, yeah, we need that. All right, then. Let's do the predictable main events. Triple threat, world title, Kenny Omega, uh, Orange Cassidy, and Pac. Don Callis wins. I'm just <laughs> yeah, Mr. Pimp, my ride wins. <laughs> yeah, I call him Pimp. I, I don't care. I do not like Don Callis, and every time I see him and people have heard me, and he's fucking Pimp's back again, or something like that, or someone smash him up, but he never gets hit. Someone needs to hit Don Callis, then I'll be happy. I predict Kenny by God Omega wins and is then confronted by Moose. Yeah, Ooh. I can see that. Can I ask one question? Is Orange Cassidy still alive after that neck? When he hit his yes. neck? Got, oh, he's still breathing. Oh, okay, I didn't think he'd be moving much after that move. Yeah, he doesn't move much anyway. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Barring his multiple sunglasses. You know, I I I thought he wasn't on the poster when I first saw it, and then I looked in the back, and he's just lying down. <laughs> That's not surprising. <laughs> no. All right, there. Uh, is it? Let me let's keep it simple. Is it a full house for Kenny by God Omega? Yep. Yep. Mike. Kenny Omega. By God Omega. Mm. Omega Omega. Kenny Seven Stars. There you go. The good old days. There we go. That is double or nothing. Your moved ball predictions. Um, we we are also competing for the ball predictions title this weekend as well. Mm-hmm. Bring it on. Bring it on. Well then, thank you everybody for tuning in. This is the Match Wrestling Podcast. Remember to like and follow Match Wrestling on Facebook. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, follow us at Match Wrestling UK on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And speaking of TikTok, sending a lot of love to Better Rottweiler today, who's uh, going up to Doggy Heaven. Aww. If, you, if you've never seen him before, though, check out some videos because he is so hilarious. And I'm really sad about it. Okay, <clears throat> above all, go check us out at matchwrestling.net. Make sure you don't miss a very special interview this Saturday as we mark one year since the shift with Mike and I on Beyond the Max. We'll be as honest and as upfront as we can about what transpired last year. Mm -hmm. And follow us on social media at TheCaptain512, at MCL92, at Walker underscore TA92, and at SMRPodNet. Before we tap out and bid you adieu, remember... Twitch makes Vince's dick itch, and everyone on Anchor thinks he's a wanker. Everyone on TikTok thinks he's a cock, including Moses Marquez.
You're goddamn right. All those things in the uh, I don't know on half of them, but yeah, absolutely. So everything's uh, moving according to El Plano, if you will. Uh, retro is dropping. Or actually, hit no, it's dropping today because goddamn Peacock ruined me. So that's already coming out. That was the what was that October the eighth, I believe, nineteen ninety six is the what I'm in. Monday, I'm I'm just gonna be rolling them out. So the next one will drop that following week from the April the twelfth. The go home show for WCW Halloween Havoc nineteen ninety six, where you got Hogan and Savage for the NWO WCW title, whatever the fuck you want to call it, uh, and then the one where the Outsiders finally get a shot at the Harlem Heat. We get that as well. Bolt Rant has three episodes dropped are going to be dropping Friday. They're all just going to flop on out out there because I'm sick and tired of holding on to them. And then um, possible live stream review. On Sunday after AEW, join me at twitch.tv forward slash big mode 2425. We're going to talk about it as I scream and yell at my TV while playing Call of Duty. (laughs) (laughs) Which is the younger equivalent to old man yells at cloud. There you go. I am am the old guy on on a fancy computer yelling at these new fangled teenagers playing these video games. Good for you. There you Someone's go. Gotta do it. He's you. <laughs> All right, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> uh, Mike, who you been talking to besides me? Um. Oh yeah, adult star Lacey Bangs and. Um, Does she? Yes, Lacey Bangs. <laughs> Lacey Bangs. <laughs> I'm not gonna be that guy, but I'm gonna be that guy. The name sounds familiar. All right, I'll <laughs> send her the link, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, big time Tony Vermer from NYWC. We talked about the good old days with NYWC taking on Brian Myers and Brett Matthews, a.k.a. Hawkins and Ryder, guys like Mike Mondo, Matt Stryker up in the place. It was a fun reminiscent of uh, Long Island's finest, the Northeast independent wrestling scene with the New York Wrestling Connection. Check me out with LFC Laundry Fighting Championships. We got a lot of events coming up in the Sturgis area, 12th, 13th, and 14th, and LFC is going to Mexico in October yeah, for Beach Laundry. There you go. So, Check us out, LaundryFC.com, Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are on all audio platforms, wherever you get your audio platforms. You can check me out each and every week with Dazzy, Travis Walker, Anderson, Moses, Marquez. We are the four horsemen for the Max Wrestling Podcast, and Daz and I on the NetPix side of things. And the last thing I'll say is, Nicola, thank you for coming on the show and not big league at us. All right, I'm out. <laughs> you shaky fuck. <laughs> <laughs> not big legging us, dig it. Right, number one, Mr. Larkin. I do not big league anyone because <laughs> you're all better than me, you know it. Except anyway. for Ryan Squad. <laughs> Except for Ryan <laughs> Except for them, yeah. Them three are going to die an unvery tragic death, but that's not the <laughs> point. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, sorry for interrupting. <laughs> no, you're cool. Well, if people are brave enough, where can they find you? Normally in hell, but uh, right as of right now, you can find us on uh, Nicola Mac 853 on Twitter under the Demoness. And if you want to find me on Facebook, it's Nicola MacDonald, Dave Smith, and that's about it. But yeah, look in hell and make sure you don't miss this, ex- uh, this exhibition with the Demoness against these three um, ants, as we're calling them now. Oh, it's going to be a massacre. Three chuckle fucks. The chuckle Chuckle fucks. fucks. Team chuckle chuckle fuck. fuck. (laughs) And join us... Next week! Next week! As we head into June on the first anniversary of the shift. And also, there's no predictions next week, but there is the week after. Yeah. Wait, wait, what is is it? Against all odds. Against all odds, yeah. Heck in a cell is the end of the month. Yeah, that's right. This was episode 324. We will catch your ass down the open road, and that's the bottom line. Goodbye. And good night. Let's go, Brit motherfucking Baker. D. M. D.